So ladies and gentlemen, now what we're going to be looking at um, is what are, how are we going to graph the tangent function. Before we get into graph tangent functions, I want to go back through the main important points so that you have your notes out so that you can write this down even though that looks very, very delicious right now um, because I didn't have my breakfast. So anyways, let's go back into on your test and what we're going to ask for is the important points again, the amplitude, the period, the x scale, the vt, and the phase shift. I'm going to rewrite that again, but just a little bit longer. So when we're graphing the tangent, just like how we graphed, um, just like how we graphed sine and cosine, we need to be able to determine, how did I do this? I don't like the exact same thing, but all right, whatever. So I'll write it down below. But we need to be able to determine our important characteristics. So for every single one of your graphs, this is going to be the first thing you're going to have to do. And where I would start with this is do the amplitude. Well, actually, before we get to that, let's go back and talk about our parent, our kind of transformation of formula for tangent. Hey, guess what? It looks exactly like sine and cosine, right? And very similar to what we've done for quadratics, for logarithmic, for exponential, for radical, right? All those type of things, the exact same thing. Now, the nice thing is the amplitude, right? Remember, that was the half distance between your highest point and your lowest point. But when you guys looked at the graph of tangent, did we have a highest point? No, the graph infinitely goes, approaches that um, asymptote. So guess what? This should be the easiest point you get on your test. For tangent and cotangent and the reciprocal functions which we'll talk about, there is no amplitude. So we're good. Amplitude's done. Now period, this is a change. Um, as you guys hopefully noticed that if you guys remember, the period for uh, sine and cosine was 2 pi divided by b, right? It went up and on and up. Well, you guys hopefully noticed that this period was a period only to complete the cycle was between an asymptote and an asymptote. So the period is smaller, which is just going to be pi divided by b. All right, now here's one thing that I do differently. All right, I'm not really too concerned about your graphs um, as far as how you guys have them set up. I'm more important concerned about your important points. And the important points for sine and cosine were the x-intercepts, the maximum, and the minimum. I only deem the important points for a sine graph at, or for a tangent graph as the x-intercept and the asymptotes. That's really all I care about. If you want to do your x scale divided by 4, what that's going to do is that's going to tell you those two points that are when they're going to like equal 1, right? Or those kind of values. And that will give you a better idea of the curve of tangent. But for me, I'm not really going to be too concerned about that. I really just, make I really just want to make sure you guys know where the graph crosses the x-axis and where the asymptote is going to be. And then also how you can actually estimate what the graph will look like. So I'm just going to use my x scale just divided by 2. Then vertical transformation, again, is just going to be your d. And your phase shift is going to be the exact same thing, bx minus c. So really, ladies and gentlemen, the only difference from tangent going from sine and cosine is just going to be your amplitude is now non-existent. Your period, instead of 2 pi divided by b, is just pi divided by b. And your x scale, instead of it being your period divided by 4, in my class, we're going to do period divided by 2. Now again, one little quick note. So here's what tangent looks like. Okay, That's the tangent graph. All right. What you guys notice in this period, there's two important points that I'm concerned about. If you want to do your x scale and divide it by 4, what that's going to tell you is just what those two points were. Okay. So even using your x scale by 4, it's not wrong. All right? It's just giving you more points to use. But I'm not going to deem those points my important points that I'm going to concerned about. I'm only really concerned about your x-intercept and the asymptote. All right? These are going to affect, because your graph can look like that, or it can look really skinny. So it is helpful to sometimes have the x scale divided by 4. But I'm just going to focus for this class and for this chapter just on you guys having to know those two. All right? But to get a better idea of what the graph looks like, 
you can do the x scale divided by 4 and, and, and evaluate your tangent function at those points. All right? Okay.